Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures with me, Sula. In this episode, I'm going to take another look at the Optron HAZ-46 Strain Wave Alt-AS Telescope Mount. I bought this mount in June because I was hoping it would serve as a very lightweight mount to hold a 10 inch telescope. And I was planning to take that setup on a camping trip to a dark sky site and put it on a carbon fiber tripod. The only tripod iOptron makes that fits this mount. The only other option for a tripod from iOptron for the Has 46 is the Light Rock tripod, but they don't make a plate for the Light Rock to attach it to the Has 46. And the website just says you have to make your own. So I bought the carbon fiber tripod. The Has 46 weighs 12 pounds, and according to iOptron, it has a payload capacity of 44 pounds. And it's a strain wave mount, so it doesn't need any counterweights, and it uses stepper motors that don't use as much power, and it's very quiet when it slews, so it's ideal for taking to a campground and it has an internal battery that can run up to 10 hours, or you can plug it into a power source. Before I left for the camping trip, I tested out the mount on top of the carbon tripod with a 30 pound schmidt cassegrain telescope. For this mount to work, you have to level it precisely before starting, and I did. I was meticulous in leveling this mount, but in my testing, the mount wasn't very accurate with the 30 pound telescope on it and I concluded that it was due to the weight of the telescope causing the mount to no longer be level once it started slewing. Because with lighter telescopes, a 90 millimeter refractor and a 115 millimeter refractor, it worked well. So I made a video about this mount and I only gave it three stars. And then I didn't take it on the camping trip. I asked iOptron if I could return it and they said yes. And they didn't charge me anything. Several months later, iOptron contacted me and they asked me if I'd like to give it another try with the Light Rock tripod, which is much sturdier and a modified pier that they would send to me. And they said that I could try the setup out for as long as I needed to, and that if I liked it, I could buy it back from them at a discount. And if I didn't like it, I could return it at no cost to me. So of course I said, sure. So. I received the HAS 46, it's the same mount that I had returned over the summer, the Light Rock tripod. It's a stainless steel tripod with, I think, two inch upper legs and one and a half inch lower legs, and it has improved locking levers. And this mini pier that was cobbled together by welding two piers. The bottom half attaches to the Light Rock with two hex screws that they sent me, but I went to Ace Hardware and I bought a third hex screw to make it more secure and the tripod came with a center post, but it doesn't secure the mini pier. The post is bigger than the hole at the bottom of the pier, which I think accepts 3 8 inch screws. The only function of the center post is to hold the center plate spreader that keeps the legs apart, and it also holds your eyepieces. And since it didn't come with any instructions, it took me a while to figure out how to put this thing together. The top of this welded together mini pier has a short 3 8 inch bolt that screws into the base of the HAS 46. So I put everything together and I tested it out. I, I traded in my 10 inch 30 pound telescope for a 9 and a quarter inch telescope that weighs 23 pounds. That 30 pound telescope was too heavy for me and I nearly dropped it twice. It was painful because it was otherwise a great telescope, but I had to let it go. So in my testing of the HAS 46 using this handcrafted mini pier and the Light Rock tripod, I first tried it out on a nine and a quarter inch mid cast grain. And it was mostly accurate, but sometimes it wasn't. But I realized after a few test runs how to make this mount more accurate. I checked the bubble level and it's still leveled. And then it wanted to go to Venus. I actually think it's more accurate when it chooses a star as the alignment so I chose Vega and it was off a little bit but I centered it and now I'm going to ask it to go to M57 because it's not quite dark and M57 is nearby so it should be in the center oh wow M57 is dead center 
nice. Now it was close by, so if it hadn't been, I'd be very disappointed. Now I'm going to ask it to go to Venus. Wow. Very, very good. Wow. I am very impressed. It is not completely centered, but pretty darn close and in the field of view. Wow. Okay, I'm very happy. And, and 23 pounds is a little over half of what they say the capacity is for this. It's called the Has 46, but it can hold 44 pounds. But um, I'm not going to go above 23 pounds anyway, because uh, it's hard for me to lift above shoulder level. Let's go to M39, Open Cluster and Cygnus. Okay, it's in there, but I was at 5146 and they're only about three degrees apart. So let's go to the Veil Nebula. I, I know that's tacky, but I don't have a dew shield for this telescope yet, so I had to improvise. Okay, yes, it's in there. So pretty. Hello, Veil Nebula. Haven't looked at you for a while. All righty. I'm going to test it one more night tonight and follow a very specific procedure that I think will work to make this mount accurate. But I want to be sure that I'm right. So I have it with the label facing south and the telescope is on the right side of the mount. And now I'm going to turn it on and calibrate it. And if it tries to go to Jupiter, I'm going to hit the back button and make it go to a star because I think it's more accurate if it aligns with the star rather than a planet. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just think so. So I'm turning it on now. Okay, sure enough, it tried to choose Jupiter, but I hit the back button and now it's going to Vega. So my procedure is you can't be flying all over the universe. To make this thing accurate, if you want to go to another constellation, go to the brightest star and center it and then sync to target on that star and then go search around in that constellation. And when you're ready to go to another constellation, go to the brightest star of that constellation, center it, sync to target, and then look around in that constellation. And in that way, it's accurate. But let's find out. Let's go over to Taurus and center Aldebaran. And then we'll look for the Crab Nebula Aldebaran. It slews nice and quiet. I like that. And it's light. And I like that it has an internal battery. Okay, Aldebaran was not in the field of view, but I centered it. And now I'm going to go to Menu. Sync to target, sync, and it says move the arrow keys to center it, but it's pretty well centered. Enter. Now, it should be accurate if I ask it to go to M1, the Crab Nebula. It is in there. <laughs> okay, let's go to something nearby, a star cluster, NGC 1647. Okay, NGC 1647 is in there. I went and got my red light. That white one was blind to me. Now let's see if it'll go to M35 in Gemini. M35 is a beautiful star cluster. <clears throat> oh, rats, it's at the bottom. Huh. Well, at least it's in the field of view. What a beautiful star cluster. It's not doing as well today as it was yesterday. The objects are at least in the field of view, but I want them in the center, especially after using the sync to target function. So let's go to Capella, which is the brightest star in Auriga. Let's go to M36. All right, it's in the field of view. It's not in the center, but pretty close. Okay. 
After Vega, it went right to M57, which is very close. Then I went to Deneb and centered Deneb, and it went pretty close to NGC 6826, the blinking planetary nebula, so that was pretty good. Then I went to Saturn, and it was off by every mountain I've ever owned. <laughs> I don't know why. They're just not very accurate on the planets, but it was close. So I looked at Saturn, which looked great, by the way. And now I'm going back to Deneb, and I'm going to see if it is still accurate when I move to another area of the sky, and then I'm going to go to a completely different constellation, but it seems better. I'm just going to go to Alberio because it starts with A. Beautiful double star and Cygnus, the swan. So hopefully it'll be in the center, I wish. Oh, that looks pretty good. Okay, pretty close, pretty good. Beautiful double star. I think it's going to be clear tonight, so I'm going to test it out. I tested it out a little bit last night, and I'm going to test it out again tonight. I wanted to use my 150 millimeter refractor because it weighs 27 pounds, but I moved the saddle to the top because I don't feel comfortable putting that telescope on on the side so I'm going to use this 115 millimeter refractor instead it weighs 14.6 pounds which is not even half of the payload capacity so you can't say it's overburdened by weight tonight I lowered the tripod legs because I think it needs to be lower and I tighten them down nice and snug and of course I leveled it and today it was very accurate. It went to everything I asked it to go to. Now I use the sync to target function on a bright star, especially if I'm going to another area of the sky because that's where it tends to not be centered. But today it's working very well. I'm very happy with it. Before turning the mount on, for whatever reason, it's more accurate if I follow this procedure. I point this label south and I put the telescope on the right hand side of the mount and then I start it. After the mount calibrates, it will choose a bright object, but I will not let it choose the moon or a planet because every mount I've ever owned, even my extremely accurate Lasmandi mount, it's not accurate in pointing to planets. And I'll not let it choose the moon because the moon is too big and it's too inaccurate to use the moon as the alignment object. So if it tries to go to the moon, or a planet, I hit the back button until it chooses a star to align to. And I take a long time to center that star using the reticle eyepiece and then using the sync to target function. I also lowered the legs of the tripod to make it very stable. And finally, after following that procedure, it was very accurate. Another thing I did to improve the accuracy was that I stayed in one area of the sky after carefully centering the alignment star and if I wanted to go to a new area of the sky, especially on the opposite side, I always realign on a bright star first and sink to target and then stay in that area for a while. You can't just go all over the sky. It needs to be realigned on a bright star and sink to target first. And in following that procedure, the mount was very accurate, especially with a lighter, smaller telescope on it. So I'm revising my earlier rating of three stars and I'm giving this mount four stars. I'm not giving it five stars because I don't think it's very accurate with a lot of weight on it. I would say it remains accurate with the payload of about up to 23 pounds. And if you follow the procedures I just outlined, then the mount is very accurate. And I recommend it for telescopes weighing up to about 22 or 23 pounds. And that's a lot of payload for a telescope mount that doesn't require counterweights and only weighs 12 pounds. Now about this homemade <laughs> mini pier, it's kind of ugly <laughs> and I'd like something a little more pleasing to look at and more secure. And I don't understand why iOptron doesn't make a light rock tripod that the HAS 46 and the HAS 31 will fit on. The carbon tripod is light, but I don't think it's sturdy enough for the HAS 46. And it's curious that this is the only tripod that iOptron offers for the HAS-31 or the HAS-46. It's sturdy enough for the HAS-31, 
but not the HAS 46 in my opinion. However, I found out that Oberwerk, the binocular company, promotes the HAS 31 because it's very suitable for large binoculars. And Oberwerk makes a very classy wooden tripod, the TR3, that weighs 12 pounds and has a payload capacity of 40 pounds. It's expensive, but Oberwerk makes their own mini pier that attaches directly to the TR3 tripod and holds the HAS 31 or the HAS 46. So I'd like to look into that, but I think I'll keep this mount and use it next year for my camping trip to a dark sky site. I'd like to thank iOptron for giving me the opportunity to try this mount out again and for making this homemade mini pier to hold the mount onto the light rock tripod. iOptron did not ask me to make this video or tell me anything to say about it. Everything I've said about the HAS 46 is my own opinion and my own conclusion after my own testing. I like this mount and I'm gonna keep it and I give it four stars. I'll see y'all soon. Dark skies forever. Sula signing off.